Hi, my name is Fanny Livdotter and I created a queer art museum. After a hectic but amazing summer of traveling back and forth, I spent a full week with my partner in the countryside where he lives. But while there, I also couldn't resist filming a little bit. So one day we visited Homografiska Museet, or the Homographic Museum, and I got to speak with the founder. My name is Fanny Livdotter. I'm an artist and I'm also the founder of Homografiska Museet. I am identifying myself as a queer person and as a they, them. I do feel a lot like there is a fluent essence to my being. So I just love no borders <laughs> of what I can be or who anyone else could be. And here is an introduction to what the museum is. Homografiska Museet is a place, a physical and a very much digital space that is looking through a completely different reality and saying, hey, if queer was the norm, how would history look like? By that, we are buying art from other artists and displaying them from the perspective of the museum. So the museum then is completely reality fucked. Like we are, we are defining our own norm and we want the uh, visitors to feel the same when they step in. So every year, the board of the museum choose five artists that get to exhibit one artifact each. So completely freedom to the artists that we choose what they want to display. And of course, we tell them about the background of the museum, that this is uh, Narnia, some kind of like his own little world. And they decide themselves if they want to participate in that or if they would still want to base everything from the reality it is. But the museum will still look at their art through the museum's lens. So the museum was founded 2020. It is physically here in Fengefors, Dalsland, Sweden, but as much digital. And there you can see the complete collection. And that is now 15 artifacts, as we call them. It feels amazing to offer this kind of opportunity to other artists. This gives them a credibility that I wish others would give me. And we try to put as much love towards the artist as we possibly can. And they are constantly playing with people's perspective of the museum. Maybe as you can see, it's a very small museum, but we are trying to constantly work with the perception. So it's, it's grand in my imagination, at least. We always try to make it sound like the museum has many employees, that we are way bigger than what we are. And we also trying to be maybe that force that can be able to stand up towards certain behaviors and ways that maybe a single person can't. And Fanny loves seeing how people react to the museum. It is very amazing to see when other queer people step into the museum and understand instantly what this is about and why it is important. But even more fun when like maybe older straight people that are not getting it at all and get like super frustrated. The idea for this museum has been with Fanny ever since they came across something that one of our huge art institutions in Sweden said. The whole museum started in my head like 10 years ago or something. It was an institution that was, they got the question like, hey, why are you only exhibiting white heterosexual Western men? And their reaction was so grand because they were like, no, we, we don't see that. We only exhibit like huge, amazing, talented artists. And that really threw me off because I am assuming then they aren't digging that deep. There are many great artists and especially young people that are so passionate. It is frustrating that maybe we are looking into the same artist over and over again, and then maybe by that, selecting unintentionally away others. That's how it works. Collections works like that. You have made a choice. So we are picking another perspective and we are making our own choices. The place was uh, Fotografiska. Maybe <laughs> that is obvious by the name. So that frustration that they weren't seeing it, they were not taking the criticism in a good way. 
homographic as a word popped up in my head and slowly was built in my brain. It's on, been on my mind and I know many other people have reacted in similar situations where it's like there is a blindness that we maybe need to work more actively on curing because it's curable in this case. You just need to dig a little bit more. Let's get back to this perspective of the world that this museum takes and what that means. The museum is looking through a lens that is saying queer is the norm, how would history and reality look then. It's like an advanced thought experiment, like if you are otherwise making art that isn't with the norm at the moment, maybe there are elements where you maybe make yourself a little bit more shapeable with the existing norm or maybe you're limiting yourself because you're not feeling like others will understand. So this is supposed to be a, like a breathing hole or like a possibility to maybe feel like this is having that safe space that you might not get in other galleries and institutions and museums. And funny things that it's important not just for artists to be able to make art for queer spaces, but also for the visitors. I think it's very important to have these kinds of places to feel accepted or seen or heard. I think it alleviates some kind of pressure. I mean, the museum is completely purple. It is a full on body experience stepping in. So in one way you say like therapeutical, like you're experiencing something else. You step in and you're in another world. Me personally, it's always been like, when I don't see myself or others like myself, then maybe I need to pretend like it is. There is a pub in a village nearby that I stepped in and it was like a lot of men with huge mustaches and like leather pants and I was like yay this is a gay bar this is like a very leather dad gay bar but it's not but that's my way of like coping with reality is maybe by bending it without them knowing sometimes living as a queer person in the countryside you might feel alone Maybe I haven't been the solution to the problem before. Like living in the countryside, there is nothing. There isn't a safety net or community or businesses or anything that is coming from the queer community or for the queer community. I felt like I needed to create that kind of place of, I don't know, security or recognition. Because what we see around here is maybe that we are the representation of queers, but maybe I just want to be a human and maybe it would be better if cafes or businesses or organizations were carrying that burden more than that I myself, me myself, like I, I just want to be a person. And that would have been a lovely way of ending this video. But this is such a great project and if you think so too, you can be a part of moving it forward. Everything is built by me and of course the board, my cheerleading squad, my pep people supporting me in this. And of course it hasn't been cheap. It costs a lot of time and money. I can see how important it is, but I also see how hard it is to fund it. So this year we started a volunteer organization for the museum. We're really just trying to find ways to support this. So I'm very much reaching out at the moment going like, hey, we need friends. We want people to join this organization, this movement, this cosmic clusterfuck of a place. Like I want, I want other people to feel like they can be part of it. And the more friends the museum has, the more fun we can do. I'm talking about like, maybe we can have like queer clubs. Maybe we can have a homographic beer. Like maybe we can just like have so much fun with it. The museum is so much bigger than myself. This is not just my art project and I want others to feel like they are part of it. So head over to Homografiska's webpage and read about how you can support the museum financially. And if you happen to pass by Fengifors, go visit. If you enjoyed watching that video, please like, comment, subscribe and share the video. I really appreciate you showing your love in that way. 
If you also want to support the channel financially, that's possible via Patreon, but really no pressure. See you next time.